Greetings, exile. Are you like me? Are you tired of creepy old man telling you to gaze into the abyss? Greetings, exile. Are you like me? Are you tired of creepy, celestial old men telling you to gaze into the abyss? Are you sick of toddlers commanding you to stand still? Or have you wished to end world before it even begins? Well, if that's the case, then meet Sir Bongsalot the third. He will make sure all your dreams come true. But unlike his predecessors, who were strikers, he's a true bonker. A slammer who will bonk your enemies so hard, they will be left gazing into the abyss for a long time. Just don't take my word for it. Take a look yourself. I won't go into too much detail about the skill mechanics as we have a whole separate video for that. But to provide you guys with a short summary, for this build we are using wall ground slam but since all wall skills require souls which can only be generated by killing enemies or hitting unique monsters, we are using hate for unique gloves. These gloves convert our souls cost to rage and we are generating rage with the help of war cries using rage mastery. Other than that, let's talk about the utility offensive and defensive aspects of this build. Let's start with utility. In this build, we are using a total of 6 war cries, out of which 3 are automated. Those being infernal cry, intimidating cry and rallying cry. But any war cries which are automated do not grant any buffs or charges. So you might wonder, what do they grant? Well, infernal cry grants fire explosion, intimidating cry grants double damage and rallying cry grants 25% more damage. Other than these, we have three more war cries which we manually use. Those being Enduring Cry, Seismic Cry and Battle Mage Cry. As we have a total of 95% increased war cry buff effect all over the skill tree, the benefits from these war cries are almost doubled. As Enduring Cry grants 20% increased life regeneration and 10 endurance charges, Battle Mage Cry grants increased base critical strike chance and Seismic Cry grants more area of effect and more armor. As for the offensive aspect, when the stars align, our build can deal up to 100 million damage in a single blow, which has only two outcomes, either the decimation of our enemies or eternal stun nation. Now for the defensive aspect, what about the times when the enemy is not either stunned or dead? Well, the tonkiness of our juggernaut is no joke either. He has a total of 100k maximum armor, 10 endurance charges, divine shield and 2000 HP regenerated per second. Our main six link is present in our weapon, which is a uh, elder influence Karui Maul. The reason we have selected this base because it can roll level 10 endurance charge and melee stun support, making it a potential seven link. As for its gems, it consists of wall ground slam linked to ruthless support, overexertion, pulverize, awakened melee physical, and awakened brutality. And let's say if you don't have like 100% crit chance, you can even swap out. Brutality for critical strike support. Next, for our body armor, which is also a six link, we're using a Eater and Exarch influenced royal plate, which allows us to roll implicits like all maximum resistances and pride is increased aura effect. As for the gems contained in the body armor, we have pride, flesh and stone, herald of purity, and blood and sand. All of these are linked to level four enlightened support. And since I add another empty socket in the armor. I also put in Frost Flink. 
one thing you guys should make sure that you don't have any life modifiers on the armor because you want to use the life mo mastery with it which is 15% increase maximum life if there are no life modifiers on the armor now let's talk about our gloves hate forge these unique gloves allow us to use rage instead of souls to use wall skills without these gloves our build can't function as for the gems contained in the glove we have more duration support linked to molten shell enduring cry and vengeful cry after this for our boots we're using warlord influence leviathan greaves as these allow us to roll modifiers like plus one to maximum endurance touches as for the gems contained in the boots we have auto exertion linked to intimidating cry infernal cry and railing cry as all of the three cries are linked to auto exertion they are automated lastly over a helmet we are using echoes of creation unique helmet this helmet grants us 15 percent more attack damage for each war cry exerting our attacks and since we have a total of five war cries we get 75 percent more attack damage just from this helmet it also provides additional use of each war cry which is socketed inside it as for the gems it contains battle mage cry seismic cry linked to life tap support and battle mage cry is also linked to assassin mark which means whenever we use any exerted attack from battle mage cry assassin mark is automatically applied for rest of our gear we have equipped a synthesized ring in our right ring slot whose implicit grant us plus one to maximum endurance charges and we are replicating all its modifiers by equipping a calandra's touch in our right ring slot in our amulet slot we equipped strangled gasp a unique amulet which can be enchanted four times we've enchanted it with endurance charisma sovereignty admonisher overall this amulet grants us plus one to maximum endurance charges bunch of mana duration and war cry speed finally in our belt slot we have equipped mage blood a unique belt which causes our leftmost four utility flasks to consistently apply their effect the four magic utility flasks are bismuth flask for increased elemental resistance granite flask for increased armor diamond flask for increased critical strike chance and lastly squeak zero flask for movement speed all of these flasks have prefixes which grant them increased effect and as for the suffixes we have increased armor chance to avoid being shot increased elemental resistance and critical strike chance it does not matter on which specific flask this suffixes appear as long as you have them also all the flasks are enchanted with 70% increased effect using enkindling orbs for this build we are using two eight passive large cluster jewels both of them have heavy hitter and battlefield dominator we also have an additional notable which is of no use for us we just have it so we can pick the jewel sockets and ignore the three passive points for rest of the jewels we have storm shroud for ailment immunity a megalomaniac which grants us overlord mob mentality and destructive aspect the main notables we need are overlord and destructive aspect then we have impossible escape for iron grip which allows us to educate constitution berserking and battle ruse after that we have glorious vanity which converts eternal youth to divine flesh also if you have this, this specific number we get plus one to chaos maximum chaos resistance at these notables then we have intuitive leaf near stamina this allows us to allocate stamina barbarism magic fury and juggernaut lastly we have a forbidden flesh and flame combo to get sionis sun roar from chieftain now let's talk about our mastery starting with the life mastery which grants us 15 percent increase maximum life then for the critical strike mastery we take increased stun duration from critical strikes and increased critical strike multiplier against unique enemies after that for 200 mastery we take 15 percent more stun duration then the stun mastery grants us increased critical strike multiplier against stunned enemies. Mace mastery grants us 50% increased stun duration. And lastly, the rage masteries grant us maximum rage and the ability to generate rage whenever we use a war cry. For ascendancy, we take unflinching on completing the normal labyrinth. This will grant us a source to generate endurance charges. And also increase our maximum endurance charges by one then we take unyielding on completing the cruel labyrinth 
This will grant us increased damage, area of effect and stun duration based on our endurance charges. After that, we take unstoppable on completing the merciless labyrinth. This will literally make us unstoppable by granting us immunity to all kind of slows and stuns. Lastly, when we finish the uber labyrinth, we take unbreakable as by this time we should have a decent enough body armor and unbreakable is also good in combination with divine shield. For pantheon, we select soul of lunaris as our major god and soul of shakari as our minor god. If you enjoy this kind of off-meta stupid content, please consider subscribing and to witness this stupidity even earlier, you can even join our Discord server. I'm still not done with this league, and there are plenty more stupid builds I'd love to share with you all. As for what you can expect next... As always, thanks for watching.